Hello, I'm Keith, and welcome to ThailandTV.tv News. We're glad you've joined us. The big news story is the same that is affecting the entire world, the COVID-19 virus. However, Thailand is doing a great job in containing the issue. As of Saturday, there were 2,792 total cases, just 27 new cases. 1,999 have recovered with 47 deaths. If there is good news in any of this, out of the top 56 countries in the world, Thailand is ranked 54th in the outbreak. The nationwide curfew is still in effect from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. until at least April 30th. The alcohol ban has been extended until April 30th as well. On a personal note, I only have two beers left in the fridge. A major shopping retailer, Central, has told its suppliers that they plan to open their malls again on May 1st. And regional airline Air Asia plans to resume flights on May 1st as well. This year's Song Cram celebration has been canceled, and wow, what a difference a year makes. Here's what Song Cram looked like last year. Here is how Kosan Road looked this year during the same period of time. At a checkpoint near Pattaya during the Songkran Festival, instead of water guns being aimed at you, police were taking people's temperatures instead. Although the COVID-19 pandemic has been tragic for the world, it has had some unexpected results that benefit for Thailand. As a direct result of the strict measures, 367 less people died during these seven dangerous days of Song Krak. Speaking of Pattaya, when the city was locked down very quickly, many of the low-wage hotel, restaurant, and entertainment workers were caught with no money and no way to get out of the city to stay with family. Many have no food to eat. Volunteers are on the street to give food to hundreds in need. Here at Lisa's guest house, a very long line as they stepped up to feed hundreds last week. At the Robin Hood restaurant on Second Road, they're giving out chicken and rice to hundreds of people who have no job or income currently. See the stuff, all the stuff help for do that. Many people. We will do that two times, two times every week. Today we make chicken, rice, sweet sour sauce, bouillon. We give free water also and free drink, Coca-Cola, everything for the people need. Everybody here. Hello, Sawadee Kap. Second road, Robin Wood. Speaking of hungry, an update from last week. If you recall, in La Puree, in Central Thailand, it was a battle between the city monkeys and the temple monkeys. Usually the primates are well fed by tourists to the city, but since tourism has dried up, these starving monkeys were fighting over a single banana. Well, that video went viral, and now the locals have stepped up to feed the monkeys. As you can see, a lot of papaya has arrived.
And now here is Rob to explain how big data, like Google, is helping the countries around the world understand how the pandemic has affected everyday life. The big tech giants are often maligned for the huge amount of data they collect about their billions of users. But in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic, this data is proving to be a huge help to public health officials around the world. Google is sharing anonymized data from apps such as Google Maps, allowing organizations fighting COVID-19 to assess the impact of measures such as social distancing. These community mobility reports provide insights into what has changed in response to these policies. The reports chart movement trends over time by geography and across different categories of places such as retail and recreation, groceries and pharmacies, parks, transit stations, workplaces and residential. Access to this data allows health officials to compare movement of the population before and after these measures were introduced. They are able to assess in which aspects of life they are working and which they are not. The figures for Thailand demonstrate that social distancing and shelter-in-place directives have had a real impact. Transport has been hardest hit with visits to subway, bus and train stations down by 61%. Visits to retail stores, recreation areas and parks have also plummeted down over 50% compared to earlier numbers. However, the impact has been less severe in other areas. Visits to workplaces, pharmacies and grocery stores are down by only 21%. And with people spending much more time at home, it's no surprise that home-based activity has increased, although only by a relatively low 17%. Armed with this information, the Thai government and other health organisations can now make more informed plans for the future, and hopefully that will get us all back to some kind of normality sooner rather than later. This is Rob Palmer reporting from Bangkok, Thailand. And we'll be right back. As most of you know, finding PPE has been an issue for both frontline healthcare workers and all of us just walking around the street. This week at Tesco on Rama 4, here is your complete retail display, complete with face masks and surprisingly a full PPE suit. I wonder if Bangkok's award-winning tailors will be making custom protection equipment where going forward. Thank you for joining us. For all of us around the world, it has been very hard to stay at home. We host an online, worldwide happy hour every Friday at 11 a.m. from Bangkok. We have people from all over the world joining us, and you can too. Just go to bkkfun.com for all the details. Once again, for all the details, bkkfun.com. Finally, we are all doing our part to help in this worldwide pandemic. If you were wondering how you could help, here's a little Thai girl to teach you how you too can help the first responders and make them face shields. Good night, Kap Kun Kap from Bangkok.
ฟองน้ำหนาประมาณหนึ่งนิ้วค่ะแตมโป้ค่ะยางยืดค่ะมีเทปกาวค่ะแตะกาวสองหน้าลงบนแผ่นฟองน้ำค่ะแตะฟองน้ำลงบนแผ่นใสค่ะเราจะเย็บยางยืดกับแผ่นใสลงไปด้วยกันค่ะมาเย็บอีกข้างหนึ่งค่ะก่อนเลยค่ะเคเวลาทำเสร็จให้เราแปะเทปกาวลงบนนี้นะคะค่ะแค่นี้เราก็จะได้เฟสเชลแบบง่าย